Time to re-up YouTube, your boy Young Mustard is back with another video, and I think it's time for us to address one of the biggest myths in the history of the NBA. I've been meaning to talk about this topic for a pretty long time, but with us now finally being deep into the offseason, I think it's perfect for us to finally address it. And that is this myth that Kobe Bryant is the closest thing to Michael Jordan. But before we get started, you guys make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell for post notifications to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel channel i think the closest thing to him was kobe my opinion man is mike and then it's kobe i kobe. feel like kobe gets slighted man, about all people this. who played against kobe thank you they know thank they you know. They thank know. Now I know what a lot of people are gonna say. So many players have said it. Even Michael Jordan himself has said it, that Kobe Bryant modeled his game after MJ. And this video is not to say that those players and people are wrong, because they're not. Kobe Bryant, even from his mannerisms onto his play style, obviously took inspiration from Michael Jordan. But taking inspiration does not mean that you are actually the carbon copy of said player. If Kobe actually was a carbon copy of Michael Jordan, or hell, even just 10 or 5 percent worse than Michael Jordan in that respect, he would actually be a completely different player than a lot of you probably think. Let's start off with the fact that when Michael Jordan came into the NBA, he was a freak athlete. At six foot six, he could jump out the gym. His vertical was tremendous. And I'm not trying to glaze him too much, but the hang time he had was truly remarkable. And it was a wonder to see, I can't lie. Of course, you had other great athletes back in the day like Dominique Wilkins, but Michael Jordan was truly a special breed because it wasn't just the fact that he could jump out the gym and he had hang time for days, but it's the fact that he could control his body in midair in ways that we had never seen before or even after to this day. To put it simply, Jordan Jordan was a freak of nature in ways that we had never seen before and probably in ways that we will still never see again. And when you compare that athleticism with a great first step off the dribble, you have one of the greatest slashers in the history of basketball. His athleticism gave him the edge of beating guys off the dribble and relentlessly attacking the basket with rim pressure. And as I said earlier, he had the body control to finish through contact, even if it wasn't a dunk, just avoiding people at the rim with ease. Almost every aspect of Michael Jordan's game was influenced off of how great of an athlete he was. It doesn't mean that he didn't have skill along with his athleticism, but the skill part of Jordan's career came after the three-peat, not before. Because a lot of people tend to forget that Michael Jordan changed his game mid-stages of his career. As I mentioned earlier, the first run of Michael Jordan's career, he was not the same athlete that he was during the second run, which is natural. He was older, and obviously he had took a break to play baseball. He didn't come into the league as an amazing amazing mid-range shooter out the gate, but later on he developed into a much better mid-range shooter, but where he perfected it was in the run of the second three-peat. To put into perspective just how insane of a mid-range shooter Jordan was in the second three-peat, look no further than the 1997 NBA season for him. At the rim, Michael Jordan shot a measly 52%. 52% from MJ. That goes to show you that his effectiveness at the rim was nowhere near what it was in the earlier stages of his career. But when you look at what he shot in the mid-range, it truly is incredible. As in the mid-range, Michael Jordan shot 50%, 50% ridiculous. These were around the same stages that he worked on his post game, his footwork, his turnaround. All of those things came together in a perfect blend for him to extend his career and still be the great player that he always was. Which then brings us to that big myth that I was telling you guys earlier, which is that Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan's games are exactly the same, which then makes him the closest to MJ. And I truly do believe that if you look at Kobe Bryant's career in the earlier stages, sure, Kobe was still athletic. I'm not taking that away from him, but he was not nearly the athlete that Michael Jordan was, and I would even say Dwayne Wade was. They called Dwayne Wade Flash for a reason. His ultra quick speed off the dribble was something remarkable. Whether he was running the break or beating somebody off the dribble in the half court scenario, or being an off guard as well, which Jordan also excelled at coming off of pin downs and attacking closeouts, Dwayne Wade had that in his bag and did that a whole lot better than Kobe Bryant did. And that's not to knock Kobe Bryant. 
Bryant, they were just different players. Kobe was a great athlete, I'm not going to take that away from him, but he is not the athlete that Dwayne Wade was. And if you want to actually put that to the test, just look at the fact that Dwayne Wade had all those knee surgeries and he was still as athletic as he was in 2009. If Wade was not so injury prone, there's a chance that he would have blew Kobe out the water even further. Wade was the perfect definition of a slasher in the NBA. His quick speed gave him advantages in multiple different situations and his ability to finish at the rim was something special. I mean, we're talking about a player that wasn't even a three-point shooter. He was an attacker of the basket consistently and obviously he did have a mid-range game as well. But when it came to what D-Wade specialized in in the 2000s, it was attacking the basket relentlessly. Another thing about this convo that people just leave out is that scoring is not all Michael Jordan did. When you talk about play styles, you have to include other aspects of people's games. Aside from being arguably the greatest scorer of all time, Michael Jordan was also an elite defender. He was also a great playmaker. When you look at the defensive side of the ball, even if you want to say Kobe is the better on-ball defender between him and D-Wade, that brings you to off-ball where it's not even close. Because at a lot of points in Kobe Bryant's career, especially in the latter half, he was not a great off-ball defender. He ball watched a lot, he allowed a lot of backdoor cuts due to it, hence why a lot of people, including myself, and even his own former head coach Phil Jackson believe he is an overrated defender. But in the case of D-Wade, his off-ball defense was actually a huge strength of his. His ability to get in passing lanes or even his weak side shot blocking, which then feeds into another point of D-Wade and Michael Jordan being so similar even on the defensive side of the ball. Jordan was also an amazing off-ball defender, could rack up steals on and off the ball, getting in passing lanes, and was very capable of blocking shots rather easily compared to D-Wade as well. Then you get into the playmaking aspect, which I will also give D-Wade that edge over Kobe, especially when we're comparing it to Michael Jordan. Not only are we talking off the ball, but on the ball as well. Kobe did not make the reads that Dwayne Wade made at his peak in 2009. Whether it was operating in transition, in the PNR, half court scenarios, off pin downs, ball screens, off the ball screens, D-Wade was able to have decision making that was on par with Michael Jordan. And if you want to say Jordan has the edge, that's fine. But he was much closer in that aspect than Kobe Bryant was. And that's not to knock Kobe Bryant because he's still a really good playmaker in his own right. But I'm giving that edge to D-Wade, especially in the convo compared to Michael Jordan. Now that then leads into the question, why? Why do people say that Kobe is the closest to Michael Jordan when Dwayne Wade was right there and even played for a good chunk of Kobe's career? Why wouldn't they look at Dwayne Wade and say the exact same thing? Well, I think it comes down to two things. For one, everybody loves aura. The aura of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan in those photos back then, it had so much aura and feel to it that you couldn't help but look at it and say, man, that's the student and the master right there. Another thing about this conversation that gets lost is the fact that a lot of people watched Michael Jordan in the second three-peat and they don't really remember the other years of his career. And when you throw in the fact that Kobe Bryant came into the league around that time as well, those parallels started to match up very quickly, especially when Jordan started to acknowledge it even while he was still in the league. I guarantee you that if Dwayne Wade came in the league at the exact same time that Kobe Bryant did, you would see a lot of these comparisons of D-Wade to Michael Jordan a lot more. But because D-Wade came in years after Kobe Bryant was already even established as an all-star caliber player, obviously Kobe got that nod instead. At the end of the day, I understand why things are the way they are. It makes for a nice story to see these videos of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, the interviews of MJ talking about Kobe, and though God rest his soul, Kobe Bryant is not with us anymore. His legacy being seen as the student and MJ being the master, it's a nice story. But at the end of the day, mythology is not reality. And the reality is, despite people knowing that Dwayne Wade was a great player, they underrate how how great of a peak he had, while for the reasons I mentioned earlier, they'll overrate the peak that Kobe Bryant had. And it's wild to me because Kobe's greatest strength is not his peak. It is not that. It is his longevity in his career and his ability to extend his prime by studying the tape of Michael Jordan on how he was able to do so in the second three-peat is literally why people say he's the closest thing to Michael Jordan. My problem is the sample size in which he's copying Michael Jordan is just too short for me to say he's 
he's the closest thing to MJ when we have a larger sample size of Michael Jordan's career that Dwayne Wade had almost a decade of replicating. But A, those are just my thoughts. I could be wrong according to a lot of you guys, so let me know down below in the comment section. Also, you guys go and check out my second channel, Omo Mustard. I just dropped a video detailing the Superman problem. If you're interested in that kind of content, make sure you go and do so. Link is down below in the description box. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. You guys stay safe and have a blessed day. Peace. Money keeps coming, I'm feeling it's great. I pay eight figure taxes, no more session eight. I was working my wrist trying to see what it takes. Made a 30 to 60 to feelings of me.